All right, my Gucci Maniacs, I'm back. You know, I wanted to see more interviews. And a guy I went to school with wanted to know why there's a large population of Hispanics that are supporting President Trump. So I've got a really good friend of mine, Gabriel. And Gabriel happens to not only be a Hispanic, but he's also a Trump supporter. I sure am. So the first question I want to ask is, uh, you would, you're in your 20s, right? I'm 28. Going to be 29 next year. All right, so you're April. within the millennial generation. Yes, that. And it's also fortunately big, I am. It's a big growth of millennials also supporting Trump. Oh yeah. I found that out this morning. So, why did you come out to support Trump? Well, initially, before the 2016 elections, I saw Trump as more of a kind of a goofy guy. I didn't really take him too seriously, and I thought he was a little bit of a joke. But ever since September 11th, 2001, I got interested in politics because of the Trade Center and the terrorist attack that happened that day. So ever since then, I've been a little interested in all of the dealings and all the mechanisms that make politics work the way it does. Seeing a lot of the issues that happened with Hillary Clinton and George Bush and the different people in uh, the different people in politics I could go ahead and see that Hillary Clinton was definitely not going to be the choice I would have wanted she would have raged more wars she would have caused all kinds of strife she was also a divider just like Barack Obama so when Trump came out and said that he was going to physically and spiritually oppose all, everyone that is the swamp I kind of said you know what that's not really he's not really that bad of a guy because I truly believe that if Hillary Clinton was president during 2016 to now, we would definitely be in a war with Russia. She has done nothing but try to drumbeat up that whole thing for the last five years before she was even trying to run for presidency. So for president, for Trump right now, I think it's a really good thing that he was the wall that stopped all the crazy leftism, the liberal SJW agenda, and all the crazy sycophants in, in Washington, D.C., Congress, the Senate, and pretty much all around the world. It's pretty obvious nowadays seeing as all the stuff that has been happening around the country since the COVID beginning, since let's just say since January, you can see a lot of traders, people who are drunk on power and people who just can't seem to let go of it, creating more and more regulations and strife for all people all around the world in the country. So Trump right now is that wall and for us to vote for him is to save not only the American Republic, but also to save the world in itself too. Now, for instance, now I was a, a diehard Republican, but after the two Bush administrations and after having Mitt Romney as a candidate and after having the laughable late senator, which was a big joke from this state of Arizona mm -hmm. here. <laughs> uh, oh, we know him. As, as presidential candidates. I left the Republican Party and became an independent. Right. But I've, and I've, I've explained this to people who watch my videos, and I've told you before that in 2016, I wasn't sure who I was going to vote for. I didn't like either one of them. Mm -hmm. And I closed, my, I closed my eyes. I asked the Lord to let me make the decision. I put the pen down, my eyes closed, and landed on Trump. <laughs> That's the only reason why I voted for him, but this time I had no hesitation to vote for him. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you said you have a mega hat, which you I have do. to wear the mega hat. And uh, do you get why you supported him because you're Hispanic? Do you get that a lot? Yes, and from a lot of people, leftists especially, if I'm not supporting their preferred candidate of choice, I must be a race traitor or some sort of internalized racism against my own people. Now, I do know that everyone has poor characters in their race from all different people all around the world. That's not to say that we can be a better example for ourselves and for other people. But just because I was born accidentally as a Hispanic person does not mean that I have to identify or follow in lockstep with leftists whenever they tell me I have to do something. And guilt tripping me and playing to the demagoguery feelings of just the simple animalistic instincts of fear, sorrow, sadness is just isn't going to make me do that. And if Trump's going to be the person who not only has multiple people with different viewpoints and different people from around the world gathering under one banner and the other side just does nothing but espouse division and, and actively encourages you to get rid of the people who support Trump out of your life, 
those people aren't for you. They're for censorship. And it doesn't matter who I vote for or who I with at the time. If you're constantly in the form of censorship, I'm not going to be going with you at all. And that's pretty much one of the reasons why I see myself supporting Trump right now and not really aligning at all with the SJW leftist agenda. Now, I'm going to ask, this is probably going to be an obvious answer to this question, mm. but do you get that from blacks? Do you get that from his, other Hispanics, or do you get it mostly from white? It's funny, because with all the activism going on a lot recently, you see BLM, Antifa, Proud Boys, different organizations like that. Now, for an organization that spells as BLM, you'd figure a lot of black people would be in support of this, but no, it's mainly white white liberals who are going around and fighting on the behalf of other people who may or may not want that. So when people come up to me and who exactly are they, it's basically white liberals who think they know what my life should be, what it shouldn't be, and the direction I should be taking better than I know myself. And when they come up to me and do that, that's not just racist, but it's also incredibly insulting because it's not the right, it's the left who purports that minorities can't figure out for themselves what to do. They even said to themselves that blacks don't even know where the DMV is at. That's incredibly racist. And to just blanket statement the whole race like that is the absolute definition of bigotry. So I'm all inside of freedom. And let me guess, they're not just white, they're probably highly educated college. Yes, most of the people that actually do <laughs> consider me to be a uh, race trader are from a higher institution of learning, college, university, maybe just a little bit of high school. But all the people who claim to be purports of knowledge and academia are the ones who are berating me and calling me stupid and shallow. When these people couldn't even change a doorknob, they couldn't even garden right. These people have zero skills other than just to sit there and socially berate you and have their followers attack you. And that's not the society I want to have be. That's not the society or the people I'd want to be governing my government, especially when it comes to taking away the rights of others, which they are wholeheartedly for. Now, I interviewed a friend of mine who immigrated from England. Of course, I don't know how far back your family immigrated here, mm -hmm. but it was done legally, right? Oh, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Let's see. So my father is actually originally from Mexico. My mom is from here. So he, she met my mom. She, my mom met my dad in Mexico, and then they came over here when he had his green card. So he was legally allowed to stay here. Then they had me, and I was born here. Most of my family on my dad's side is from Tijuana or Zacatecas. They're a very conservative part of Mexico. So it's not a surprise to me that they're also in support of Trump, even though they have no legal right to vote for him. They just support him, you know, emotionally and spiritually. So that's pretty much how my life came into here as being. And especially when it comes to like other Mexicans, myself, or Hispanics, or things like that, some of them do fall into the propaganda haze of if I'm against them, I must also be some sort of racist. But again, this isn't me just because I'm Mexican, I have to do anything. This is America, the land of the free, and I am an individual. I'm not bound, bound to anybody at all. I can make my own decisions, I can freely associate with who I want to, and that's pretty much just the end of it. Now, if you were talking to somebody who has not made up their mind, what would you say to them to get to get them to vote for Trump? Well, it would really depend. Some people are on the fence about who they want to vote for. Other people take real hot topic issues. So the only thing I can tell them right now is to just show them not only what Trump has done, but the lies that the media purports how CNN skews statistics, how wrong they were about the 2016 election, how constantly, no matter who it is on the left side, that's the Democratic Party, corruption seems to constantly inflate and overgrow itself. I would show them that pretty much the people on Trump's side are from all different backgrounds, all different world viewpoints. And that's an area where you can freely have a discussion, where if you wanted to go to the other side, if you didn't agree with them on absolutely everything, you could have a 99.9% .9 agreement with them. But the minute you do something that's just out of their bounds, they will completely ostracize you, ruin your life, get you fired from your job, and just destroy you financially. And those people aren't people you'd want to associate because if you have any disagreement, not everybody can agree with everybody on anything. That's just a fact. Do I agree with Trump on everything? No. 
but I'm not going to sit there and have those people sit there and tell me what I can and can't do. If I don't agree with it, then that's fine. But the other side, they just won't allow that. They will destroy you. And there's plenty of examples of it all over the internet right now. There's rampant censorship from Twitter, the rampant censorship from Facebook and, and YouTube, purging individual accounts, purging people who support Trump. You want to see how things are going, it's only flowing in one direction. And that's how I'm going to get them to support Trump, to show them exactly what's going on behind the veil. Yeah, I know what you're talking about as far as censorship, because I've been censored. Mm. Oh, yeah, you and, told me about that. And, but I've been censored twice now. Mm -hmm. One of them was a video I done with one of my puppets, which I am going to redo that video when I get a chance. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other one was I put a 30-second clip up from Hillary's America to show you the true racism of the Democrat Party. Oh, yes. Yes. And that, that had over 2,000 views, and just recently it was taken down. Trump 2020. We've got to make sure to support our president. Go ahead and get a look at that. That's nice, isn't that? Oh, yeah. Got a nice back of it, too. I think a lot of my friends are going to like that. Oh, yeah. They're going to love that. Although I do have people on the left, people on the right, and people in the middle mm -hmm. who follow my uh, videos. Yeah. Now, Gabriel and I do have... An announcement to make. This isn't just a regular call out where I'm interviewing him, but as soon as we get a chance, right uh, around the time of the election, whenever we have a day off, once a month, we're going to shoot an episode of the Gooch and Gabriel show. Hey, it's going to be pretty so cool. So we're going to talk topics like this, not just politics, but media, entertainment. Sports. We're going to talk whole about whole host sports. of issues, whole uh, host of things. So stay tuned for that. As always, like, subscribe. Gabriel's a subscriber. I am. Follow, share these videos. Help get my numbers up. If and according to my dashboard, eighty percent of people who watch my videos are not subscribers. If you're one of those, please subscribe. I mean, I only got like 61 subscribers and they watch the videos and the other ones that do watch it are like 80% of those of you who aren't. So please, please subscribe. I'm working on my merch store. As soon as I get that set up, I'll let y'all know about that. Good night. And you got any last words? I'm just, uh, well, the last thing I would say is that the fate... A lot of people like to say that the fate of the nation, or this election could be the fate of the nation. They said that all the way from 1990 till right now. 2000 didn't feel like it, 2004 didn't feel like it, and all the way up until 2016, it really didn't feel like it. But because of the authoritarian power grabs that the left is trying to go ahead and enact with the COVID, I think that if they do win, we're looking at a tyrannical state of which like we've never seen, something similar to what's already happening in the UK. We're going to be living through George Orwell's book, 1984, very soon if they get their way. Good night, and please subscribe.